Welcome to the channel for the first time viewers. Welcome back for my existing subscribers. Today I'm going to go over my 13900K uh, BIOS. I'm going to kind of share with you a little bit about what I do and a little bit of why I do certain things. So usually your BIOS is going to be in easy mode if you're using MSI, even with Asus. So F7 on both uh, motherboards will let you switch to advanced. Let me just take a look here. F7. So now we're in advanced. Um, I don't use Game Boost. I have XMP on, but I've also tuned it afterwards. So if your RAM stick has multiple uh, XMP profiles, just make sure that you have that enabled. When you're testing the RAM, the biggest thing you want to do is make sure that you load up um, MemTest. Or if you test MemTest inside of Windows, there's also that. But um, what I do is I load it up onto a USB. And I just drag and drop that. And this is the boot priority, so it always boots from that particular stick. Before doing any changes, uh, one thing I like to do is I like to save a profile. So as you can see, stock with minor tweaks, old OC values, kind of hard to see, but old OC values, 7200 secondaries were tuned, 6800 C30. Uh, this is all some stuff from when I was trying to um, get better performance in Vondel, right? All right, so... You can load any of these. Typically, what you'll do is you'll click on it and you can save the profile first or start a brand new profile so that you can go ahead and make some tweaks. And if you mess something up, just reset your um, clear your CMOS um, and then load up that where you left off where it was working perfectly fine. All right. So motherboard settings. The only thing I have changed in here really is just to make sure that the I, I manually did this just to try to see if I could help the 7900 XTX. I was getting really poor performance there. Um, but here, resizable bar. Most new BIOS have resizable bar turned on already. So you shouldn't really need to spend much time here. <coughs> um, there's one other thing. Might be under power management. <coughs> Gotta clear my throat. So here is um it's the USB standby power. This is just a, a quality of life tip um, this is on so that essentially i can provide power to the usb ports when the pc is in when it's off <clears throat> the issue that i was running into was i have my ps5 connected to the evga xr1 capture card and whenever the uh, my second pc was off the revising build is where i um, have all that recording stuff is uh, set up but whenever that pc was off I ended up with issues where, you know, I would have to turn it on so I could play my PS5 or I had to detach the uh, cable and then just it was it was a mess. So having this on allows the power because it doesn't really need much power for a pass through, but it allows me to use that capture card uh, right there. So overclocks, I use the there's the uh, simple mode or normal mode and then there's expert. I have no expert. This is just how I have mine set up. Uh, this is how I get my 5.8 gigahertz. So I use a turbo ratio. And on the MSI side, what that means is essentially um, if you have one core being loaded and that's it, you'll be at 5.9 gigahertz. Uh, two and on. So two all the way down to eight. I have it at 5.8 gigahertz. But you could customize this to be as much as you want. So you can go from, let's say you want two cores to be, you know, six gigahertz or whatever and then you want anytime you are loading up four cores you want it to be at 5.7 gigahertz you can play with this and find where you're most stable and then for the e cores this was for my p cores specifically on my e cores uh what i have set up is let me see one second i got a message okay um i just have the turbo offset ratio so i didn't really do all of this for the e cores i just hit it and then you have turbo ratio like i had above all core is one of the hardest uh, overclocks to hold, um, but it just makes sure that your cores just stay at that particular boost clock uh, for as long as they can. You also have the dynamic versus, uh, I want to say it's static is, is your other option. Uh, but the difference here is in static, it never changes. Dynamic, it does allow itself to clock down. And I do have my AVX uh, support enabled with negative five. So in really, really heavy workloads, it will drop from 5.8 to 5.3 gigahertz. So it's still really, really fast. Um, let's see one other piece in here. Let me see if I can find my advanced CPU. So the way I have my 13900K set up 
is I have hyper threading disabled, right? So this is off for me. Um, you can also turn off your e cores if for whatever reason you wanted to test out, you know, A, B, you know, you would go through here. You just say active e cores zero. Or if you were crazy, you can go ahead and like lower down your p cores. <laughs> but everything else is on auto. You'll notice that a lot is that a lot of my stuff is on auto. My ring ratio is on 5.1. It doesn't really move in game. So that's just kind of where I left it. DRAM clock, all that stuff is on auto. Um, on my DRAM configuration with my timings. So I've got 2N, 32, 42, 42, 34, 425, and I'll just scroll through. You can slow down if you need these timings, um, but you're still going to have to test. So I didn't do any of the advanced uh, timing controls down here. So I never get down into these. I usually just do the primaries, a couple of the secondaries, so the sub timings, and then I just leave. Right. So this is kind of where I focus most of my time. <clears throat> Last couple of pieces I wanted to show you in here is my CPU core voltage. It's one point three five. Um, you can lower it if you'd like. I did not change the load line calibration, so I didn't manually lower that to like one or two. Or if you have an ASUS board, it's probably like five or six or eight or whatever they go up to these days. Um, and then my SA voltage is one point three two volts. And that's what kept everything stable. And the DRAM voltage is 1.47. So that's pretty much my bio settings and a little bit about why I set things up the way I do. So again, anytime I want to test something out, I just go right through here and I load up this test profile, throw on some changes or whatever I'm at now. If it's stable and everything's working, I will, you know, lock it in right there. And then just hit save. And then just load it up so that I can go ahead and start doing some work on it and then testing it out in MemTest, making sure the RAM is good, and going into Windows, testing out. Um, let's let's do that actually. I haven't made any changes. Loading into Windows and just testing out um, Cinebench, making sure that's all good to go. And I'll show you just a quick run. I normally get about with my hyper threading disabled it does allow me to stay at 5.8 gigahertz if i enable hyper threading again it does drop i do have to go down to about 5.7 um i could do 5.7 all core but 5.6 all core is about where i could actually be stable 5.7 all core doesn't crash in games but i can't run any stress tests like so it, the other part about that is if i do anything like uh like shaders or anything like that that'll run into some issues there too so I'll just do one quick Cinebench. This is another weird thing about the 4090s is it doesn't come back until Windows is loaded, which is fucking strange. Process Lasso's firing up. I'll launch this real quick. So this is just going to be um, hardware info. And then we'll find Cinebench. There it is. It was core isolation from the last video. So I'll just run one quick multi-core. Click that. Bring this up so you can see. And we'll park it like down here or something. So the temperatures right now are anywhere between the highest core is 87. Let's find one right now. 88C, and it's just chilling. Now, this is with the hyper threading off. If I were to run the same test with hyper threading on, uh, it just wouldn't work out, right? It just would crash. So, as you can see here, well, you probably can't see it's kind of small, but I'm running at, uh, let's see if I can zoom in and move some of this stuff over to the center. So, there and there. So, here's my scores. Annoying piece in the middle. So there, 36,000 uh, 36, for the um, Cinebench score. And then while I was running the test, these are all of the cores. Let me try to get it out the glare. So 89 was the hottest core. If I run this a few times, it'll probably get up to the 90s um, before I have any kind of issues. But yeah, just wanted to show you all what I do. And then this is kind of high. 
do a quick test and get back into the games, man. Not this extreme overclocker. I just do a couple things so I can get a little bit more performance out of the games and keep it moving. So hopefully this helps some of y'all out. Um, and yeah, if you're not into all of this, the simple thing you could do is you can go into your BIOS. If you see the XMP button, you can click on that. And that will let you just load up your XMP profile for your RAM. And that's going to be the biggest jump in your performance right there. Um, the rest is if you don't feel like getting into, <clears throat> but you happen to still be in the video, um, the rest is just going to be more so little things that give you like 2% here, 1% there. But by the end, you're like 10, 15% more. So if, if you do everything, right? So if you were originally getting 200 FPS, then you'll get 230 FPS. Theoretically, it's not a hard number, but yeah. With that, I'm going to cut out from here. Y'all be easy.